हेलो नमस्कार एंड अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल द व्यूअर्स वॉचिंग एन सी आर इज लाइव इंटरक्टिव सेशन दिस इज सिमरन सिंह एंड यू हैव ऑल कनेक्टेड विद आस थ्रू ई विद्या चैनल नंबर सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व बिसाइड दिस यू कैन वॉच द लाइव टेलीकास्ट ऑफ द डाइवर्स प्रोग्राम दैट वी कंडक्ट थ्रू आउट द डे on our ncre official youtube channel and once again i would like to take this moment to welcome all our learners all our viewers in the 5 days 5 hours online training program on development of e content video resources so it's 16th of october 2023 and today it's the first day of our 5 days online training program and talking about e content now e content it plays an immensely important role in order to shape the way our teaching and learning process is accepted and understood these days and when we talk about video resources they have gained much popularity in this digital era or i should say the ever changing technological world so it is very important to discuss the know how why of these video resources therefore to shed light on the different aspects we have our 5 days online training program on the development of e content for the different formats of video resources and providing us more insights into the conversation we will be connected with our esteemed resource persons with our faculties from diverse dimensions so that you can understand it better in order to make these sessions really conducive and easy for all of you and in the live training sessions you can all connect with us through our contact number that is flashing on your screens so in case of doubts feel free to give us a call at 8800 Four four zero five five nine, and besides that, you all know that we have our training ID flashing on your screens. It is training dot help desk at the rate c r e t dot n i c dot i n. And one area I would like to emphasize that all your questions regarding our training programs will be addressed only if you mail your queries at this particular mail ID flashing on your screens. so let us quickly have a look at our computer screens and try and understand the different aspects that we are going to cover with respect to the development of e content video resources for the upcoming 4 days or i should say 5 days including today's as well so today is the first day of our online training program we are going to discuss about video resources the policy perspectives the concept format and scope tomorrow the conversation will revolve around process of developing video resources then we are going to discuss about script writing that uh, marks an important area when it comes to videos then it's about recording and editing of video resources and on the concluding day of our 5 days online training program we are going to elaborate at length about evaluation and dissemination of video resources now this is the detailed web page in cit and crt where you can gain all the information regarding the 5 days 5 hours training program and uh, here is a detailed schedule for you the different uh, measures for you the different steps laid down so that you can all participate with us for our program as well as for the post session quiz or the link we will be explaining about it also in the four days upcoming programs but do remember all your questions all your queries will be addressed here itself and uh, do listen and watch the sessions very carefully because the questions of the quiz the questions of the post session activity will be curated from the training programs itself and if you score over 70% and above you can receive a certificate from cit ncrt so without further delays uh, let me introduce you to the expert for today's program in the conversation we have with us dr angel ratnabai namaskar ma'am good afternoon good afternoon ma'am is serving as assistant professor at cit ncrt so ma'am as we are discussing about the concept need and scope uh, let's quickly talk about the policy recommendations with respect to development of e content especially video resources uh, thank you ms simran uh, for introducing and welcome all to for this 5d 5d training on e content development which is very specifically going to be on video resource uh, before we get into the uh, policy we all uh, are aware that we are living in a digitally oriented world where we are right now teaching to learners who are digital natives as we can see here our digital natives who are all our learners basically are digitally connected and networked now like so these are some of the characteristics of our digital learners due to which 
uh, we are really forced to use digital content in our classroom and in teaching learning process and even for the assessment sake. Uh, they are able, capable of doing multitasking and they are very quick in uh, to digitize in, instead of uh, like printed in information. Today even if we see like we are very quick to listen to podcast or just to listen to FM to receive the information rather than going to any library and then reading books and even now people have stopped going to library to read books rather just go to YouTube, just search for a video, listen from the expert and keep going on. So we all know that like digital natives are more of quick, uh, they, are, they are quick to accessing the digital information rather than the printing information and also we know that. Uh, people are not na any more a linear way of learning. They love to randomly learn or we can say instead of randomly, we can also say it as like the earlier way of uh, learning was more of linear than branch. Like for example, today when I learn, I do not see go in a linear sequence. I do not complete one and then go. There are people today, digital learners who want to learn one and see, okay, in this I need only this part. I do not want to go to the next mm. step, but I can just jump to the fourth step or I can just parallelly learn two things which is required for the third step. So, that is also one of the uh, feature like one of the characteristic characteristics of the digital learners. Also, we all are aware that now they are very, uh, very much of a mobile user. Not only students of this age, but even teachers of this age are more dependent on learning through mobile rather than sitting on the desktop and learning. So, uh, that is one thing which makes video to be one of the resource very quick to be utilized because in mobile if you see the one type of resource that is easily accessed that is more accessed or is a video resource because like more than PDF because the moment they open a PDF they think like it has to be open this way that way it should be of this font or any text based resources for that but mostly we see uh, the type of um, resource which is used in mobile is more of video that is what statistics says about the use of resource. So, having this context it demands that we need to use uh, video resources. So, what does policy say about it? Policy does not specify only as video, but actually policy recommends the use of digital content, very specifically e-content in various languages and also to be used in all platforms that is like, like Diksha or Swayam or Swayam Prabha every part platform should be available like you no know, made available to you uh, for enabling the use of e-content and also it talks about creating special uh, resource for children with special needs. It also talks about having a digital repository and uh, it also talks about where a digital infrastructure and capacity building is mandatory. So, if you read out all these recommendations which is given in NEP it all turns towards um, encouraging the use of various digital content in the classroom practices. And one of the thing which is widely used is videos and audios, but today we are going to ask we have already learnt about audios and today we are going to focus on more on the video resources. Uh, and uh, when we uh, also when we proceed we also should understand about when I am going to think that videos can be used as a e-content our focus should be we need to understand why do I know, need to use it, of course, how I use we it. We have and access to information uh, through the different kind of resources. So, the important question that might arise in the mind of a learner is uh, why to use video resources? Yeah, that is a very important question to be first thought about. So, before I could answer this question, hmm. let us try to listen from our own audience. Of course. So, I think like uh, there are many audience who have already joined this program through live. Hmm. So, we can have a quick activity because all of you must be having your mobile in your hand. So, I am just going to give you a quick activity which all of you can participate though we are, we are, we are away from each other, we are not physically connected, but we are still digitally connected. So, I would request like in case if you have your mobile, you can scan this QR code which is on the screen or you can also click on the link which is put up in the chat box. You can see in the chat box we have put the link, you can use that link and just please click on the link and you will be landing in a page where it asks you to share three uses of. So, 598 viewers are currently watching us live. 
So you can all try and scan this QR code and also the link okay. has been pasted in the comment section. So we can keep seeing the screen like how it's going on. Already 10 people have, sorry, 18 people have submitted their responses. You're welcome. So we can keep seeing, we'll take another few minutes to wait for others to respond. So give any three, 49 responses have come from around 18 people. So it's That's a good so number. Quick. <laughs> So I request all the people who are watching live, you can look into the, um, you can access the link, just click on the link, you will be getting three boxes, which ask you to share three benefits of using video resource. So we'll the look link for is all the being answers. being highlighted in the comment section in the chat box of NCRT official, it's quite uh, visible. So do click at it and also share your responses with us because it's going to be very interactive and interesting to get to know what you people think about it. Yeah. Uh, since our team is keep on posting the link again and again, it's easy for you to have an easy access. Uh, we will take next two minutes to quickly see what uh, what do our audience think us. Okay, 97 responses, okay, it's a… Uh, 100, we have reached 114. Oh, great. So, 40 persons have responded, mm. very good. And the number is increasing. Yeah. And we, we others who those are finished can also keep seeing the screen how beautifully we are collaborating with each other to come out with our responses. Oh, that's great. The numbers are increasing. Yeah. And it's so quick. So many responses. We know some of you are watching through uh, TV, television also, DTH channel. So in case if you are watching and you are not able to access the link, you can simply go to browser, type it as menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot C-O-M and then you can enter the code which is given there on the screen. So if you are watching in television, you can click on your, uh, open a browser, just type menti.com and you can just enter this code 27504014 and then you can respond. Thank you so much for your wonderful participation. So this is one way we also learn that yes. even though we are uh, even though we are not mm. physically connected, we are digitally connected and we can collaborate. So let's keep observing the screen uh, so that like we can start our discussion from here. Why do we? Since I, we I, are I, getting still response. That's the power of a visual medium, and that's a live example. Yes, this is one uh, one of the benefit. Still, participants are entering the answers, but I would like to start our discussion with the already response which we have hmm. re received. So I, I would request all the participants keep please posting it till uh, we are, though we will be proceeding. You can still keep posting your responses. So now when you see this word cloud, like the, the interesting fact is here. So I'm just trying to increase the size a so little bit. Okay. So we can see here, um, uh, let's see the mind map which has uh, word cloud that has come up here. We can see here the central point, there are few words which are having a larger font which means most of you have felt that these are the points which is the benefit of using video resource. As most of you have rightly said. The first thing which uh, one thing which is coming up is video resources can make your classes interesting hmm. and some of you has most of you have responded it helps to easily understand the content and also many people have written about it could be made more effective and it also can attract students learners while you uh, use a video resource. And it also has been written like it helps to clarify and it also helps to interact. So somebody would be wondering like how do video interact, hmm. right? Also we will pick up these few points for us to further discuss about um, how, uh, thank you so much and all the responses which have come up here talks about the benefits of using video resource. So it talks, it tells that all the audience, all the learners who are watching this are already aware of what is the yes. benefit of? So let me just consolidate the benefits uh, of watching it. And at the end of the day, and at the end of the session, we can once again come back to this present uh, presentation where everyone is responding. So we can go ahead seeing like why do we need really a video resource? If you see here, as most of you have said, the first thing is it can help you to engage better. Why? 
we all have learned that if there is different medias then it will help. So, video is a combination of visuals, audio, animations, graphics. So, there is multiple medias in it that helps us to engage in a better way and also since it is multimodal learning because of all this it addresses various learning styles of the people. So, the, so that is why like all types of learners can be engaged through videos and also storytelling can be very effective through videos because you can show your expressions, you can not only like uh, speak through your voice but you can also support it with graphics and not only that visual and auditory learners as, as such when we see there are more of visual and auditory learners. So, it can like for example, uh, it can also support children with special needs yes. because if there is a person who is hearing impaired then we mm. can also integrate um, 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 sign language in it into a video. Mm. So, there is scope of integration even somebody is having a visually challenged who cannot really watch the video, but there is an audio, but still one single resource can address multiple needs and also we can make it now videos to be interactive. Many of you have written that it is it's more interactive in classroom and videos can be made as an interactive resource. Olden days it was like earlier days it was one way like in Doodashan when you watch video you can only watch. So, you will be just receiving one, one side, but today videos can be made interactive. So, today also what is happening we are in a live section, Yes, you are all watching us through as in the video format. But the way today we have collaborated in between similar way even in video resources interactivity can be brought where there is a video playing in between there is a question where the question comes up only when the tip only when the learner is able to answer the right answer mm. the video continues or it takes back to a place. So, there are interactive videos available. So, video resources can help us to make our classroom learning more effective and also video resource can be used for assessment as well. So, if you see uh, video resources, video means it is not it is a one format, but still there are various ways videos mm -hmm. can be presented. Usually we think video resources means it is just more of a lecture where somebody sits before the camera and keeps talking which is recorded where one, one way the person is communicating. Sometimes a very good presenter what they do is during lecture they add more of visuals in it rather than only showing their face some of the videos also are more of. Also they start asking different kind of questions in order to generate uh, interest from the yes. users. So, that is more of a question that is a con content change they do, mm. but format itself can be changed depending upon the your content depending upon the purpose for which you are using There are various formats of videos here we can see your video could be a talk simply one person sitting and talking when you wanted to just tell about something where you wanted to tell something new mm. you just wanted to tell as a information to them then it can be a talk based video. It could also be a role play like for small children when you want to talk about solar system, mm. you do not need to sit like this and then explain sitting here and then explaining all the solar system there are this many uh, planets here. So, more than I sit like this and explain and record a video, it would be good that each person acts like a solar plays a role of solar each mm. planet and then do it in a dramatized way. So, a role play uh, engages children to understand in a better. It also depends on which format is to be de selected based on the content, the type of learner, the level of learner and also for the purpose. And also we can have videos which is of a documentary. Yes. For example, you want to tell about like our Indian leaders in the country. Mm. So, we cannot simply say like no, I cannot go and do a drama alone. Yes. Something I really want to say how, where, where did this person live. Back For by facts, yes, evidence. by was. facts, by facts. You wanted to just say that like um, Gandhiji lived at this place, mm. Ambedkar did this. Every place you can record and document it like it is a fact documented as it is and provided as a video. And we can also do docudrama, hmm. like based on the documents you can enact it. So, there are many like for example, if you want to make a show hmm. like how India received the freedom, how, how, uh, how this uh, particular scenario happened. So, at that time you cannot make with your imagination. Yes. So, you need to go by the fact. So, if for example, you want to really put a docudrama about Netaji, 
then you need to the person who is playing the role of Neetaji should reflect Neetaji in terms of height, in terms of weight, in terms voice. of look, in terms of voice. So, that is the power of darker drama because it is more of a fact reflected in a artistic way and uh, there are much more you can also interview. Yes, like I would like to know like what is how you have to uh, handle stress. Like we talk about the journey of national ICT awardees. Yes, every week we are doing that and even when you wanted like you wanted to bring like how to manage stress. Yes. In Sahyog section we uh, sessions we usually interview psychiatrists like mm. no, we ask them psychologists like counsellors, counsellors and all that. So, it is an interview format of video. And ma'am these are the different formats <coughs> that we have understood and uh, uh, we can see that also there are two different formats uh, that one is vox populi and the another one is glass screen. So, somehow these appear to be the different names I think they are the new names maybe for our learners. So, please explain what is vox populi and vox what is a glass populi screen. is something a word may look familiar but we are very much uh, familiar with this because you might have seen like uh, every election comes during yes. there will be news they will be going to uh, people public mm -hmm. and then I asking whom do you think that uh, this time who will win. Hmm. So, some some kind of comments okay this party wins that party wins even during cricket they keep asking like do you think that India can really make yes. out. So, what is your what is what is your opinion. Hmm. So, what we are doing is we are collecting the opinion of voices of the people. We are asking so, the same kind of question to different to people. So, Vox Populi refers to voices of people. Hmm. So, what we do is like for example, when you wanted to teach about Taj Mahal in your classroom. Hmm. So, you can see like th those days when we say Taj Mahal is completely made of white marble. Hmm. So, we imagine that mar Taj Mahal should look pure white. But today you can see that is a dull color. Okay. Yes. So, if you want to bring out that instead of I sit and say Taj Mahal has become uh, dull color because of the pollution air pollution instead of I keep explaining that. Let us go to the people around who is staying around Taj Mahal just ask how did it look those days? How is the color changing up? You so, you keep on talk recording. About the real life experiences what they have felt. So, it is more of recording voices mm. of people where you wanted to bring the real voices into your classroom. Awesome. So, that is what Vox Populi is. And glass screen? Glass screen is something very interesting. For example, in a max class, you want to record a max class video. Okay, mm. you are teaching mathematics. You want to record a video of mathematics teaching. Usually, max is taught using a board. So, what happens is in a class, in a studio setup, when you wanted to record, they use the blackboard where okay. the blackboard the teacher turns and keeps writing. So, most of the time when we record using a camera the teachers backside is recorded. So, yes. what they tell is the person who is writing on the blackboard has to turn 45 degree. Hmm. So, when the person stands 45 degree automatically we lose our comfort. So, we will be always standing 45 degree holding my chalk like this <laughs> turning my face like this it is a little uncomfortable yes. situation which really pulls down the teacher spirit of teaching. So, nowadays you can see they have a top camera yes. and then they keep like this writing like I have here a board yes. with me. So, I keep writing here and then we expect like that to have a top camera where the top camera can actually record what I am writing here and then give it. So, we can also try and uh, cut the top camera and let our viewers see. Yeah. That uh, how with the help of top camera uh, we can write and we can uh, display. So, when the things. teacher wants to teach they can say like x1 plus x2 is equal to. So, like this no they can keep on mm. writing and then record, but you can see in a live session we are writing like this. So, when you wanted to record it it is more of recording like this. So, this is one of the technique glass screen is one of the technique where you must have seen some Baiju's videos and all yes. where the person stands like this with his fingers they just keep on going. Like when I write like this before me the text appears. So, it is more of a comfortable for a max teacher to write like this in a board and I am getting recorded in my friend mm. right. So, basically what happens is instead of a black board a glass screen is kept and I keep writing on a glass. It also enhances the quality of the video. Yes, the quality of the text which is appearing in mm. the video is good also it gives comfort for the presenter. So, mostly whenever like more of physics when you wanted to write a lot of formula where yes. you wanted to draw a diagram and show. So, this is one of the technique which is used for creating. So, now you can uh, people used to really think it is so difficult to create, but even using uh, slide presentations now our garment te teachers working in garment school where there is no facility also creates this, such, mm -hmm. this kind of video. So, it is easy for us to create. 
So coming to see this overall picture, there are various formats of video which we can use as a person who is preparing a video according to our content, according to the uh, learner style or learner's level, according to what context you are going to use, we can decide upon the presentation format and we have to go ahead for creating the resource. So ma'am, as of now, uh, we know that what video resources are and why we should use them. But the important question is uh, when to start using these resources because uh, we, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have so many different kinds of resources. Now, when should I switch to video resources? When will it be more impactful? Okay. Uh, so, we need to understand, we know that like a video is not just a one component. Yes. In video, there can be various forms of e-content, mm. right? So, there could be multimedia embedded into a video, there could be text embedded into a video, audio and video clip itself could be embedded yes. into a video mm. as well. So, if we see there are various resources that can be embedded into a video as it is shown on the screen. Uh, so, like sometimes interactive you know, animation clips can be included. Though I am going to record a complete lecture, in between I can see an animation clip. In between I can see some photographs. In between I can see a mind map which is explaining mm. it. There can be variety of resources that can come in, right? So, this gives a scope that video resources, there is no specific that you should use only in the starting or in between or in the end of the list. Video resources could be used at any point. It could be at the pre-lesson, like mm. you before you start the lesson. Videos can be used for testing the previous knowledge also. You can actually use video resources to give to the people to just watch and come to the class. So that you can start like they have come from class 6 to class 7. They have learned some concept in 6. So you can give it as a pre-lesson video which a child can watch and then come to the class so that they revise the previous content. Yes. Or sometimes video resources can be used as before you start to just uh, kind of attracting the students or gaining the attention of the students. Mm. Also a video clip could be used like for example when we teach for uh, initial stage of pollution. We, we just can, we created a small animator clip where two fish are talking to each other under the sea, they are swimming very hard and they are not able to breathe and they are tied up with kind of a ties and then two uh, fishes keep saying, oh, how my life has become today uh, because today uh, I was like swimming in very... Uh, I was swimming very soft, smooth and soft. Today this mankind has put all the dirt inside so I have become like this. So it starts with this. So child immediately when the fish talks to each other, that animation attracts the student's attention. Yes. From there we build the complete context and take mm. it into the pollution. So like this, video can be used at, as a pre-lesson as well. It could be used throughout your lesson. Maybe when you want to explain the concept, for example, I am doing an experiment, I want to teach about how two chemicals react, I, there also I can completely do a demonstration video, I can use it how exactly recorded in the studio and then use it in the classroom to show them how two chemicals react in the classroom. You want to completely show the, show the process of how it happens like for example water cycle you are teaching yes how it has how the complete process is happening you may have created an animated mm. video completely maybe you want to tell about a poet poem hmm. which is like something about spring season there is a lot of English poems where you see about the blossom and the spring which we never see in our places <laughs> like I come from Madurai where I have never seen spring where that uh, it says about a purple flower blooming up so in my environment I have never seen yes, it. Literature is full of fancy weather yeah. and fancy words. So for me in a classroom to imagine that it was something hmm. which I couldn't even visualize in my classroom. So, there are many students like that, there are a lot of visualization which is required. We can bring a illustrated video which also can help during the uh, class when we build up the complete poem. We can just use those kind of illustration videos to help the children to visualize on that. And it can also be used as after the post lesson when you have finished your teaching process. Even video can be used for assessment, it could be used for reflection, evaluation, for extended learning. So, so there is no particular place when to use video, but we need to always think whether my content demands a video. Okay. For example, if I want to teach a content saying that Delhi is the capital of India, 
Hmm. New Delhi is the capital of India. This is the only one factual information which I have to teach today to my student. Yes. So for just telling this one sentence, do I need to choose a slide presentation where hmm. I can just write it? Or do I need an image? Or do I need a video? So we need to decide. I may not require a video to just send the, tell about this fact. But if I want to say Delhi is surrounded by this, this, this yes. states and these are the borders and there are, these are the rivers which are flowing. Mm. So in that case, I may need a visual of a map where it is explained one by one. So we have to choose one. wisely when to use it. Right. So appropriate choice can be made depending on the requirement based on the content, based on the learner based on the way you are going to teach and also based on the context where you are teaching. For example, in my classroom, I do not have anything to show a video. I do not yes. have a smart board. Hmm. I do not have a TV. Yes. So, should I choose video to be a resource? Of course not. <laughs> but there are teachers. I do not have it, but can I arrange for something? Yes, you can arrange on your personal mobile phones maybe. Right. Uh, I have a class of 40 students. How mm. do I use one mobile phone? Yes. So there are several good practices. There is one ICT or what you have shared that she didn't have. Only she had only one mm. mobile. I didn't have anything. So what she did is she borrowed her colleagues' mobiles, four or five mobiles yes. during the classroom and she shared video. So that is where video becomes very accessible. Because it can play in even a smaller mobile. So easy we have to, to watch. So at our convenience. What suits us better? It's... Uh, we should not say like only convenience, mm. it should be appropriate according to content. Many people use mm. it as convenience. Okay. We should not use it for convenience. All right. We should use it for appropriateness and its relevance to what, whether it is required. So, some many people say that because I, that video is good, I just wanted to use it. Because the video was given, I will use it. The video is available, I will use it. That's not the good thing to do it. Then the, what the, there was one word uh, which really if you see this uh, mind map like which word cloud which we did, um, I'm so sorry. So this has to feel like a cherry yeah. on the top. So we can see here effective is the word which most of them have written. Yes. One of the word is effective. So if you really want to make something effective, then it can be done only when it is chosen very carefully hmm. for appropriate to your content and context. Alright, yeah. so uh, having understood a lot about uh, video resources, now uh, one question, one, one very simple question that is how to integrate these uh, video resources into our education, into our classrooms? Right. Uh, today we were learning about uh, that as a first day we are trying to understand the benefits of using mm -hmm. video resources and how, um, why we should use it so that we can really understand the need for developing it. So I'm just going to take two things like very important things to be discussed here on when we think about how to use video resource. Video resources can be used like one way, one approach which I would like to show is video resources can be used in four different approaches like for example i can use video resource as a supplementary to what i'm teaching we know what is what is meant by supplement okay mm. so usually if you see when you when you have less calcium yes so doctor <laughs> says you take this calcium supplement you fill the need yes there is something already so you just fill it additional yes. mm. it's additional to it that's what we mean by supplement if you see this visual on the screen it talks about the various approaches in which we can use uh, video Let, resources. Uh, our viewers also have a look at our uh, powerpoint slide and they can understand it better yeah so if you can see here one way is supplement supplement means it's an additional to what you are teaching so maybe today I am teaching about like uh, for example in mathematics, if I am teaching in my class about today uh, on uh, number system. Hmm. So there you wanted to bring out about the contribution of the mathematician Ramanujam. Then you talk that Ramanujam contributed in this, 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 this. But you wanted to give more input to appreciate that. You wanted to give a video about how Ramanujam contributed. Mm. So you do not have a sufficient time every time in the classroom to support all the content, yes. right? Give all the content. So in that case, as a video, as a supplementary can support in extend your, extending your learning. Mm. So they can give a video, smaller video on how what are the contributions of Ramanujam and then that can be shared for them to watch at home or it can be displayed at a DTH channel where evenings they can see. So yes. that is one of the way videos can be used in mm. a classroom. The second one is using it as a complementary resource. 
how do you use as a complementary resource today i'm talking about it some yes. topic for example i'm talking about like um, in my class ab i already took an example mm. of um, how to find the ph value of a particular um, uh, item which you have taken so i want to see like four five items i want to know how to find the ph value using the litmus paper okay yes. so this is what i'm going to teach in the classroom mm. one way is you bring everything to the classroom and show doing everything right so sometimes that's not possible what we can also do is you record the complete experiment in the class in the lab yes bring the video mm. so when you are going to teach that you play that video and then in between take that video for discussion all right so it's not an additional thing mm. it is supporting you along it complements it complements that so usually if you go and buy some coffee powder they'll give you a complement of smaller jar so yes. that you can put this coffee powder inside the jar mm. if you buy some drinks they'll give a shaker yes. so that you can use it so it's basically complementary when we say mm. it is something to be used along with that all right so we can use video resources in that similar fashion also mm. and video resources can be integrated as well so when you say integrated that means like um, like for example i'm i'm going to run my whole class like no in an online course or in a blended mode yes. in my learning management system i can put this video so there is a reading text and then i come for a live session and i also put this video into it so that it becomes a complete uh, integrated system into the learning management system right infused way also we can use so infused means like for example if you are using a simulation sometimes inside a simulation it's nothing but a simulated video yes or an animated video inside a simulation so that is actually an infused so mm -hmm. for example this integrated and infused can be easily understood by one small example as if you mix sugar and pepper okay it's mixed together yes but you can separate it back yes yes you can take pepper separately that's possible possible hmm. similarly video is a separate resource yes. it's integrated into a learning management system okay. so today you can upload it and hmm. then you segregate it it could be yes. okay so that's one way of it's planned inside kind of but infused is something like you mix water and lime juice yes you are not segregate it as how the way you mix it <laughs> yes but as you increase the lime juice mm. you will see the fl flavor will change yes as you put more water there will be dilution of course. so the impact of integration will be felt mm. but you cannot segregate it so it's okay. mixed up with each other so that way you cannot people cannot say there is a video here they cannot so point that out that is more smooth yes so if you see we can use video resources in any one of the way there is nothing like you should use only at the highest level okay you can use it supplementary complementary it's a mixed way of using it in the classroom requiring again depending on your need what is the purpose of this video yes. decides how you wanted to use the resource mm. so this is one thing which we need to know mm. but slowly we can move from using it as complementary supplementary to towards integrated and, and infused, infused right and i'm also going to tell about one more thing which can help us to understand better how to use all right digital resources so this is one of the model of level of using the content uh, integrating it into your class we call it as smart where s stands for substitution a stands for augmentation n stands for modification and r stands for redefinition mm. so i'm just going to explain this one by one with the example so for example in substitution it is just a replacement of a direct tool for example those days we were writing in the blackboard yes today we are typing and putting as a powerpoint presentation yes nothing else mm. just a replacement it has it's been substituted, just a substituted in a way. with the tool there is no functional change yes that is what is the level of integration at substitution level okay so for example instead of me talking directly in my classroom i record a video lecture and play it. and okay. give it to the student hmm. just you can watch instead of listening to me directly all right so that is where we can use video resource as a substitution level right the second level is argumentation hmm. when you say argumentation the tool is also substituted but there is a little bit of functional change how so for example 
I embed a video yes. into the learning management system, okay. not directly giving to them. Okay, okay. I have put a video there telling them now watch this. Hmm. Then you reflect on this in a group discussion. We are making four activities. Yes. So now earlier I was just giving one video for hmm. you to watch, but as usual you will come for your normal exams. Yes. Only instead of a teacher teaching in the classroom, I am giving a video. Okay. That substitution. And all other things happen as it is. But in um, argumentation, it's, there is a little bit of modification of the functional part. Video plays not just as a content delivery. We are yes. uploading a video in a learning management system. And then we are saying, now watch the video. There is a question for you to reflect. So come and reflect on this question. Just mm. come and just speak out. A kind of uh, like you tell what do you understood from this. And then you are also having one quick assessment on five questions. All right. So, so, so it's somehow uh, integrated with the different areas, maybe activities. The acti or yeah, there is a little functional enhancement. Hmm. Video doesn't play just as one way of delivery. Hmm. It has some activity along with that. Okay. So that way we can also use video resource as a, at an argument initial hmm. level. Third is modification. There is a significant task change. So okay. for example, uh, like for example, if I'm teaching about water to be tested. I'll take an example of I need to test for test the water to find out how, what is the pH value, okay. what is this level in that, what is the sodium level, what is the like some chemicals in it, what components of chemicals. So that's a kind of lesson I'm teaching. Okay, hmm. so instructor can really provide a video recording of how water has to be tested. Okay, right? That's a video, and then you give the student the video, but ask them to analyze the recording. And right. you are not teaching anything. You have just recorded the complete mm. water treatment process. Okay. Right? Just giving to the student. Mm. Now telling them you watch this and try and find out what is being taught in this video. Okay. Right? And also you ask them like based on that you write your write up. This is one way a video resource could be used. Because here it's no more a content delivery. It's completely modified, the purpose is modified mm. and the task is modified. It's more of applying their critical thinking. Maybe the child doesn't understand when they watch the video. They may just go back mm. and then they, 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 they just observe, okay, what is this? So then they go back and think, okay, now what happens here? Why this two, two react here? So what is the back, back end? Like I go and read my book and then find out like why, when this react, what happens? Then come to a thing and conclude saying that this is what is my learning on this. So this feels like a complete uh, change from the way we have studied to so learn. far. Yes, so that is where it talks about significant task redefining. All right. You are, you are sorry, it's like just a modification, hmm. right? You are redefining the task. So what you are saying is earlier we didn't learn like this. Yes. It's not the actual usual hmm. process of learning. So from there you are moving to the next level of learning. So but the resource is same. You are using a video resource only. The type of resource can be used same, but the kind of content you give could be changed. All and right. the last level in which uh, the way you can use video resource is redefinition itself. It is completely re redesigning the task, which is not possible without technology. Okay, that's a sort of transformation. Transformation. So that is where the last level goes. In the previous one, we uh, we already thought about, right? Even the previous ones, there was a task redesigning. It, it was just a modification, not the entire Entire change. process. But here, the last one, if you see, like uh, the instructor provides some uh, reading list through the learning. I give four books and three web pages, links on my mm. learning management system. And ask students to watch mm. everything, okay? And then read, go observe record what they are observing as a video hmm. and then they come and integrate their findings in it. So for example, you tell them to go to a field, observe, you are giving some reader, for example, agriculture, yes. you are saying like there is this crop, that crop. So what you give is you give them material where they read all that, they go to the field, they observe, they record the video, while they record the video, they also integrate completely their findings into it and then bring it back and submit their things. And ma'am, uh, when we talk about this process, in each and every step, uh, does the learning outcome also keeps on changing? Yeah, learning outcomes can be going to the higher order. 
All right. So that is where we say it's, it doesn't mean that in substitution you cannot reach the higher order, mm. but this is where technology enables you to reach the higher order objectives yes. in a better way. Take one step, step ahead. ahead. <laughs> okay. So most of the time, if you see here, uh, substitution and argumentation is basically for enhancing the learning, mm. but modification and redefinition is for transforming the learning process. So right now if we see most of us are using at substitution and argumentation level, there is scope for us to develop video resources that can really transform our learning process, that is what NEP talks about. So where we want to embed the 21st learning century skills, so, so there is scope for creating videos which can really transform learning process as well. So this really brings the need that any video resource, there is only two things like any whenever you want to use video resource, we can use it by curating the content. Hmm. There are already available resources, I go search on the web, I go to the repositories, I ask people, I take the video resource and use it in my classroom. That may not really fit to the requirement of my classroom. That may not really fit into the purpose of my way I am going to teach. So sometimes we may also need to develop our own videos which will be benefit. So there is a misconception that like people think I need a studio to record video. Oh yes. <laughs> right? But what we also know is we can easily record videos using uh, our own mobiles. Very Mobile simple is more tools are required. Than, yes. So only thing we should know, everyone knows how to record video yes. in the mobile, but only techniques is only thing we need to know is certain techniques of how to develop it. When I record with my uh, phone, what should be my shots? Hmm. How do I really create, conceptualize that video? Uh, how should I go with the process of developing it? So that is where these five days we are going to learn about these things. What is the process I should follow while developing the video? What should be uh, my way of um, shots that I have to use? How I should use my mobile or the camera whichever I have effectively to record my video to make it more impactful. So that is what and how do I evaluate my own videos? I should also know that to know. So that is where next four days we are going to concentrate on how to develop videos. So it can be effective uh, curation of the videos or you can create these videos on your own. So that is going to be a wonderful experience for everyone and I believe that we are going to learn a lot when it comes to video resources. And by the end of the fifth day, that is when we are going to conclude our training program 20th of uh, October 2023. I think you all will be perfect with a different kind of video resources that for different formats that we are going to study and will be able to evaluate your videos on your own. Thank you so much ma'am for connecting with us and it's just the first day of the training program and uh, so many viewers have connected with us and so many beautiful comments pouring in the comment section and viewers this is not it because we have four more days where we are going to talk about the process of developing the video resources script writing that marks quite an essential area when it comes to curate or develop any sort of video then recording and editing of video resources maybe the different softwares that can be used something that comes more handy and the last one would be evaluation of your own videos whether you like it or not because if someone else has to get impressed or maybe like your video in the first place it's important for you to evaluate whether you like it or not. So ma'am, thank you so much for connecting with us. I would like to once again show the web page yes, where they course. can refer so, uh, to. Let us quickly have a look at the screens. Uh, so just on my left you can see that, uh, hmm. so we have our screen on the online training program that is the development of e-content, video resources. So the detailed banner for all of you regarding the different areas we are going to discuss for these five days. So viewers, let us scroll down. Now this particular information that you all can participate as regarding the live programs and also about the post session quiz that is our activity for all of you. Whether it is students, teacher, teacher, educators, parents, administrators, you can all connect with us. Let us scroll down. The different objectives have been laid down for all of you like describing the policy recommendations, identifying the various forms of video resources explaining the entire process of uh, editing, developing, evaluating the video content. Now the program scheduled as uh, we just discussed that it is the first day of our online training program. We will be uploading the presentation links and the video links soon. So here uh, you will have all the detailed information about the resource persons who will be connecting with us for these 
5 days 5 hours online training program now let's quickly go through these steps step number 1 is registration you can register yourself for the post session activity by clicking on this link or either by scanning this qr code now watch our live training programs either through evidya channel number 6 to 12 also you can connect with us through ncert official and some other mediums also laid down for you now step number 3 is participation in the post session activity and the certification you can participate in the post session quiz and if you score over 70% and above you'll also receive a certificate that is the best part now the post session quiz it will be uploaded towards the concluding day that is on 20th of october 2023 the opening date would be that and the closing date is 9th of november 2023 by 6 pm so you will have lot of time and these details we are going to discuss in the coming detail uh, coming days you can also submit your feedback we keep on saying in all our programs that your feedback matters a lot so please write to us uh, by filling this google form or by scanning this qr code let's scroll down you all know you can connect with us for your queries on this mail id that is training.helpdesk@cret.nic.in or you can give us a call at this contact number 8800440559 once again thanking all of you for connecting with us and it's a wrap up for the first day of our online training program and before concluding the program an important piece of information regarding the availability of ncert textbooks we are also flashing it for the different programs you all know that ncert textbooks for the academic year 2023 to 2024 they are widely available all across the country you can purchase these textbooks from the different sales counters of ncert the names of the states they are mentioned on your screens and we keep on flashing this information you can either download uh, these textbooks in the pdf or the soft copy version also you can place an order online in order to explore more about these particular books for the different subjects about authorized vendors feel free to scroll and explore the website of ncert that will be www.ncert dot n i c dot i n thank you once again it was just the first day of our training program tomorrow it's a second day at the same time 4 to 5 pm we have the second day of our online training program on development of e content for video resources we will be discussing about the process of developing video resources so do not forget to tune in with us and next up we have our sahyog program stay connected uh, we are going to provide you more details about the guidance for mental well being and psychosocial support to all the students and the learners who connect with us so keep watching e vidya channel stay very good care of yourself and do connect with us tomorrow at 4 pm for the program namaskar